Tanner, tech, Tanner, tech, Tanner, Tanner, tech, Tanner, tech, Tanner. Hello, this is Tanner Tech. So it's been a long time since I've uploaded a video. That's because I've been very busy in the past uh, few weeks, and I've been filling out my MIT application. In fact, I just completely filled it out and submitted it last night. So hopefully I'll be able to be going to MIT soon. So, in this video, I'm going to be talking about this transistor tester. So in one of my videos where I showed this, testing some transistor components, a lot of people in the comments were interested in what this is and if I built it and how it works. Now, I didn't actually build this transistor tester. I actually bought the circuit board for it and I 3D printed my own case for it. So let's take a look at what this transistor tester is, how to use it, how it works, and how to get your own. Let's get started. First of all, this is the tester itself. It is this box that has a little battery holder on the back so it can sit up like this. When you press the green button, the screen lights up and it says testing. And whatever component is inserted into these three holes is tested. Now if we disassemble this, we can see that the battery just slides into the back and clips onto this little battery clip. And then if we look over here, we can remove this front cover. It looks something like this. And we can see that this is just a plain old circuit board with a microcontroller inside it and a little screen. With the removal of this screw, you can see what this looked like when I originally bought it. Here it is. On the back, you can see that it has an 80 mega chip and oscillator, a few different transistors and other types of circuitry, and then it has the LCD screen, it has a button, and it has a few other parts. What the makers of this board have done is they have taken this 18 mega chip that usually goes on Arduinos or other microcontrollers and they've put it onto this LCD or transistor tester. This board actually has a program on it that's meant to test the transistors. So this is my 3D printed case. It is not the prettiest looking thing. Now I'll try to put the STL files for this in the description, but I don't actually have them anymore, or I think they're lost on my computer, so I'll have to dig and see if I can find them. If I find the STL files, then I will put that in the description. But anyway, this is the back, and it's pretty much a box where you can put the battery. And we have a front that lines up with the different parts of the board, and just clicks on. So you can just take your board, and I'll have a link to one of these boards uh, on Amazon in the description. And you just push it in, and then insert the screw into one of these holes. Well, now that you know what this transistor tester is and how I got it, we can test out a few different components. So for instance, I will take my LED, and I'll insert it into these holes right here. Now it doesn't matter, it can be any three of these holes. And now these holes all match up to these three holes, and the first three holes on this. So you can have a component going into this hole, and this middle hole right here, and that would be the same as this component going into this hole and this middle hole right here, because all the middle holes are aligned. So if I enter this LED and hit test, you can see that it blinks a few times, and that's it testing it. And this shows that it has a diode with a forward voltage of 1.95 volts. That means if you actually want to run this LED inside any circuit, and you need to know what voltage it runs at, you know that it is 1.95 volts. Now that's a lot easier than going and looking for a schematic for that certain LED. This triple-legged LED has two separate LEDs inside it. Let's see how well this transistor tester can tell us what are the LEDs and how are their pin configuration. If I turn this on. Oh, you missed the light show. Let me try that again. It flashes the two colors and you can see the one diode is 1.98 volts in forward voltage and one is 1.84 volts. The 1.98 is probably the green diode and the 1.84 is probably the red diode because that takes a lesser voltage. The cool thing about this tester is how universal it is. Now let's say I take an NPN transistor. Now this is just one that I pulled out of a random circuit board. Now let's take an NPN transistor. Now this one is one that I've just taken out of a random circuit board. I'll insert that. We'll hit the button, and we can see that it is, in fact, a PNP transistor, with the first pin being collector, second pin being base, and third pin being emitter. It also has a gain of 307 decibels, which means that if you input 1 volt, it'll have an output of 307 volts, theoretically. Alright, let's try an NPN transistor. There we go, it's NPN. Pin 1 is emitter, pin 2 is base, and pin 3 is collector. This transistor has a gain of 290 decibels. Now this uh, UF is the forward voltage of 651 millivolts, or 0.6 volts. This device can also tell the difference between a MOSFET 
in a transistor, a normal BJT. For instance, this MOSFET has a gate, drain, and source, and so it can tell the difference between these middle oxide field effect transistors and these bipolar junction transistors. Now, with transistors, you can always just look up their part number, and you can easily find what kind of transistor they are or what pinout they are on the internet. But I personally find it easier just to use this, because while I'm building a project, I don't want to constantly go back to my phone and look up each part number of the transistor. It's a lot easier just to stick it inside here, read the value, and pull it out and use it. Now this device can be used to measure capacitors, inductors, and resistors. My favorite part is to use it for inductors because I don't actually have a meter that can read inductance. I have a multimeter that can read capacitance and resistance, but nothing can read inductance instead of this. So I'll press the button, and it will show you that this inductor has an inductance of 1.83 henrys and a resistance of 138.8 ohms. This thing is very good at measuring inductance because it can measure them uh, it can measure even extremely small inductances very accurately. So this is a very high value inductor. Let's check a lower value inductor. This one, for instance, has an inductance of 0 0.04 millihenries at a resistance of 0.1 ohms. Now that's really helpful because if you have these inductors that you pull out of circuit boards and you have no idea what they are because they don't have anything printed on them, then you can plug them into your meter and see what they are for any projects involving RF can even measure high value electrolytic capacitors. For instance, this va capacitor has a value of 45.54 microfarads. It even says the electrostatic resistance of the capacitor and the V loss, which means how much voltage it loses about every second. Now in this video, I just explained to you the basics about how this uh, meter works and how you can personally use it to test your own components. I also have a link in the description to uh, an Amazon page where you can buy one of these things. Now in a future video, I'm going to go into stream detail and use my oscilloscope and other test equipment to see what exact signals this thing actually sends to the components while it's testing them. Because that's kind of interesting. Because you can plug in your component and you see what exactly happens, but you don't exactly know what is going on inside the component electrically. So I'll have a video on that later. For now, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for next time.